basically, the book of Ephesians describes this whole process as being filled with the Spirit. The, the way all this works, the way chapter 4 is put off, be renewed, and, and, and uh, uh, put on the new man is in chapter 5. And look at what it says starting in uh, verse 15. The, the Spirit filling our life is the power source to live out our calling. And so Paul starts describing the fullness of the Holy Spirit, and he says, when the Holy Spirit fills you, it transforms everything in our life. Now, I love, my favorite illustration of the fullness of the Spirit is gloves. You can go to Walmart or wherever you want to go, and you can buy a gardening glove, and you can take it and throw it out in the garden, and it won't do anything. Ants will crawl in it, slugs, you know, it'll get wet, but the sprinkler, it just sit there until it gets filled by a hand. You can buy a golf glove, put it in your cart, in your bag, it won't play golf until a hand fills it. I mean, with anything, you understand, you get the idea. You can get a, a snowball throwing glove and put it down, it won't throw snowballs until your hand goes in. So every glove needs to be filled. We can only live the way that, that God made us his new creations, if the Holy Spirit fills the glove of our life. So if, if you have a gardening glove on a non-gardener, you need to take it off of the gardener and put it onto a gardener, and then that glove can garden. And God says, you can't live the new life only if I fill you. And so that's the, the idea of the fullness of the Spirit. Don't think of something mystical. Think of getting me out of the way and asking the Spirit of God, to run my life, to fill my life. Uh, That's another? what a new creation wants from Christ. We say, I'm pulling over my life. I'm getting rid of Ephesians 4.22, the old me, the stinky. I'm asking you to change my mind, and I want to put on the new me. Fill the glove of my life. Okay, what happens? Verse 18, it says, don't be drunk with wine because it's dissipation, but be constantly being filled with the Spirit. Possible. And then, it doesn't stop there. Look, look what it says in verse 5. After he gets through all the parenting, it says, bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh. Basically, bond servants were slaves that were owned by a master. And basically, in our culture, it would be like an employee who has a boss they don't really particularly love. That was basically the relationship back then the masters and the servants, and there wasn't a lot of love lost between them. And what he said is, the Holy Spirit will make you, verse 5, be obedient to whoever's over you, with fear and trembling, sincerity of heart, as to Christ. You start treating your unsaved master or boss or supervisor like they are fulfilling that role for Christ's sake. And look what happens in verse 6. Not with eye service. My son is a second grade teacher this year in Honduras, and he told me a cute story. He said that, that they're building a new water line there in Honduras from the springs up in the mountains and winding it down through the jungle to the hospital. And he's helping, and a lot of others are helping, but they had to hire a local company uh, to dig a certain portion. So they hired 12 men, and the men showed up in one pickup truck, and they parked, and they showed them. The hospital director took them up and said, we need this, you know, and we're going to pay you to dig this ditch. And they went up there, and Joseph got done teaching school, and he came through the jungle up to the site. And when he got there, they were all asleep. They were all just laying around, sound asleep, and the shovel was in the ground. And he thought, that's curious, because the, doctor, or the director of the hospital is coming. And pretty soon you could hear the diesel of this guy's vehicle chugging up toward the site. He said, as soon as within earshot of the diesel, all of them were up, they threw dirt in the air, and they were shoveling like mad. And the, the doctor came, and, and he says, wow, he says, you guys are really working hard. And they went, yeah. And Joseph's over there watching from the jungle. And as soon as he drove away, they laid back down on the ground. They only had one shovel, by the way, which was a bad sign with 12 men. You know, and it just wasn't a good thing. And he said, they only worked when the supervisor, they could hear his car coming. Now look at verse 6. Not with eye service, that means when they're watching, as men pleasers to kind of do what they want you to do, but as bond servants of Christ, 
doing the will of God from the heart. Do you know what Paul said? The operating system we have, the Holy Spirit filling us, flows into our life, and our, our whole life changes. In a moment, our personality changes. We'll look at that. But our marriages changes, our families change, and our work lives and our careers change. We're not any longer working for General Motors. Now, my dad worked for General Motors for 46 years, and he loved it. Do you know why? He told me, he said, the UAW is paying for me to study the Bible. He says, we have so many breaks. The union got so many breaks. He says, I think I have to work like 37 minutes, and then I get 12 minutes off, and then I don't know what else. And, and he brought all these books, and he taught himself the Greek language, the Hebrew language. He studied through every book of the Bible. He used to teach our Sunday school at Lake Lansing Baptist Church, and people were amazed. And they said, how do you have time to do this? He said, the UAW. I have my breaks. And he took them all. Now, all the other guys were in looking at their, whatever they look at, their, their magazines and, and sitting around smoking and whatever they did in the break room. And he was out sitting, using his time because he said, I don't work for General Motors. I work for the Lord. Now, what he also told me, this is in the 50s and 60s, he said, a lot of those guys would lay in the cars going down the production line and they would sleep and they would wake each other up after they got so far and they'd run back and get in at the front end and just ride that thing through and sleep and and as long as no one was looking nobody knew and he said I couldn't do that why because of verse 6 I was serving as a bond servant of Christ he says I worked for General Motors every moment except when the UAW said I had to take my break and then I studied God changes our work lives and careers forever he empowers us to live out the new us.